Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Holy Mass today begins on page 101 in your red books of common prayer. God chose to make known how great among the nations are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Together we pray the colic for purity. Almighty God, to you all Christ, our God, all the saints and the and the Holy Spirit's family, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and will magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your well beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We sit now to listen to God's holy word. Chapter 2, verses 5 to 12. Now, God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone had testified somewhere, What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You made them a little lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor. Subject all things under their feet. Now, when subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who was for a while made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste, taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom, the, whom and through whom all things exist, is bringing, is bringing many children to glory, should make the fire of their salvation perfect through suffering. For one who suffers and those who are suffered, su sacrificed, sacrificed, <coughs> sanctified, all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in your mass book. O oh Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and avenger.
should be mindful of him, the son of man, that you should seek him out. You have made him over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, the first chapter, beginning at the second verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Words from the Gospel we've just heard. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, be silent and come out of him. As we are still in the season of Epiphany, there are a few obvious changes. For example, liturgically speaking, we have moved from white now to green, the symbol the church uses to describe growth. Jesus himself has also grown from what we've just celebrated, Christmas. Being a baby in the manger, to being presented with gifts from the wise men, to what we celebrated Sunday, Jesus at 30 being baptized in the River Jordan, and now today, he's at work. And one of the first things in this year's cycle that we hear Jesus does is an exorcism. Remember, Epiphany is about manifesting, revealing who God is. Even more than just revealing who He is, it's us having encounters or experiences with God. And this is what the season of Epiphany tries to pull out of the stories. Who Jesus is and what Jesus has come to do with us and for us and through us. But the text chosen for this morning says that this Jesus rebuked the devil, saying to the devil, be silent and come out. This, this word silent can also mean quiet, 
And if we were tra to translate it literally, it means muzzled. Almost how we are with mans. To have something over our mouth. To mums the word. And Jesus commands the demon to come out. But in a final show of defiance, because remember the devil said, we know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. We get it. But to show their resistance against who he is, the scriptures say that the unclean spirits convulse the man, throw him on the ground, ring him up, make him scream with pain as the demons depart. And that they depart helpless before Jesus' word of command. This, if you remember the story of his baptism, John did say there is one that is coming who is mightier than I am. This is he. He has command even over devils and demons. And already, John the Baptist's prophecy about who Jesus is, again, what Epiphany does, exposing Jesus to us, inviting us to have an encounter with Jesus. John's prophecy is seen by all the people, especially in these verses this morning, when the people begin to spread who he is throughout the region of Galilee. The demon's tyranny is over, and the possessed man is set free. But this story of Jesus this morning's first exorcism portrays that the forces of evil are real. But then, if we can accept that evil spirits are real, then we must accept that the power and the presence and the person of Jesus is also real. Many of us have our own demons to struggle with. The truth is, many of us have demons. Now, now what they may be may vary. And there's nobody that should pretend that you don't have demons. The things that possess your life at times that are contrary to the will, the way, and the word of God. Because we all have them. And then there are times that there are some of us, it's not just an evil force. Evil is not just an impersonal force, but it is sometimes concentrated in a invisible, malevolent being who is bent on destroying humans, bent on messing up what God created. Demons are head over heel, determined to hinder God's plan of salvation. And so demons can come in many forms. I, I, I'm, I'm never shy to confess that I have mine, but you have yours, but we also have Jesus, Amen. the one who is mightier than I. And that's John saying, but apply it to you this morning. Jesus is mightier than me. With all of my brokenness, with all of my hurt, with all of my anxieties, with all of my struggles and the challenges and the things that so easily beset me, greater is he, the scripture says, that is in you than he that is in the world. And we know that the scriptures also say that the devil is the prince of the air. And so this morning, the evil spirits are at times responsible for some of the mental and even the physical things that we go through. And sometimes, as I've heard some people say, stop blaming the devil. Because some of us are evil on our own. Our reality this morning is, the gospel does not distinguish between illness 
and demonic possession. And that's why when you watch movies, you know, The Exorcism of Emily Rose and other different movies with exorcisms in it, it's always the clergy's job to ensure that a medical presence is there during the exorcism to distinguish between this person may have a physical challenge or a spiritual challenge. And there are many of us who have our own physical challenges, but we must admit the first thing in this season of Epiphany we see about Jesus is not just only who he is, but what we can be. But there is some good news this morning that the demons acknowledge who he is. The demons actually address them. We know that that's a, we know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. What you come to bother with us for? And I want you to know that Jesus doesn't tell the demons to tell out all your business. Jesus doesn't say to the demon, say what he has done. Why have you entered into this man? No. What does Jesus say? Shut up. Muzzle yourself. Be quiet. Come out. So many times we expect that when we say, oh, whatever you do will come out into light. You know, that doesn't have to mean that what you do is meant to bring you shame, meant to hurt you, meant to destroy your life. What sometimes it means is that Jesus will bring you out of what you are in, into his, listen to the word, marvelous, not mischievous, not malicious, his marvelous light, calling you to restoration, calling you into reconciliation from what possessed you. Our reality this morning is that we must not dismiss that demons are just fables we read about in stories. Because if you look around the world in which we live, demons at work, and these days it seems like they are on what we call overtime. Look at the phenomenon of racial cleansing. Look at the amount of suicides. Look at the amount of domestic violence. Look at the amount of people who are just now desperate and longing for hope. Uh, look at how crime in our country has escalated. Just open your eyes and see. Look at what politics in the United States, a first world country, is showing the rest of the world. Look at how now history is repeating itself with colorism and racism. You see, these demons come to destroy the image of God in us. Because within us there's a spark of divine. In us, God has planted a purpose and a hope, says Jeremiah. In us, Christmas reminds us that God and sinners reconcile. The devil don't want that. Why would he want you to reconcile with God? Why would he want me to be a better priest, a more loving husband, a more caring father? What, why do you think the devil would want that? And here's our job as church. If we are frightened that the devil has real power, then we must take confidence this morning that the power of Christ is infinitely superior. If demons and what they can do frighten you, then knowing who Jesus is this epiphany, having an encounter with this Jesus who steps out of the cradle and out of the water, and the first thing we read in Mark is that he casts out the demon out of a man to set him free and liberate him, should give us the confidence and the boldness and the quietness in which we should find strength. Be encouraged today that through Jesus' cross and resurrection, which we will experience later on in the year, he has definitely conquered the powers of hell. 
For the present time, however, their malicious actions, it's all permitted by God. And God is able, according to Romans 8.28, to work out good out of every evil. Listen to that. Romans 8.28. God is able to work out the good out of every evil. And I want to remind us, when we see demons in others, always remember that we need to look within our own homes. Look around you first, because everybody is fighting or struggling with a demon, many demons, whatever it may be. And we seem to focus on the fact that they have a demon and rather than offering them or sharing with them or giving to them Jesus. Today I pray that our baptism affords us protection from the demons that haunt us and taunt our lives. Today I pray that whatever the demons are that we are fighting, Jesus this time of year would say to each and every one of us, or to the demon in us, quiet, muzzle yourself, and set my child free. Amen. If you desire to be free of the very evil that possesses you, or may seem to have hindered or broken a part of your life, and, and there's no shame in saying you're there, I have been there and still there many days. But knowing that Jesus is able to rescue me, the song says, Jesus will save. Knowing that Jesus saves and that his idea of casting out the demon, yes, you notice the demon tries to hurt the man, right? You telling us, come up, but we're going to break him up before we leave him. We can throw him down, probably break one of his fingers, do all kind of manner. Convulsing means to throw him down with force, to hurt the man. In the presence of Jesus, listen to what I'm saying. In his presence, the devil's figured, okay, we hear you, and we're going to listen to you, but we're going we to finish him off. But still, because they are helpless, because they have no power within themselves, because God is control of everything. They may try their best to destroy, but God still delivers. Be encouraged today that no matter the demons we face, we are to encounter a God who is infinitely superior. A God whose voice, whose presence, even the devil in hell knows that he is the son of the living God. Amen. Do you know him to be the same? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, let us stand together and acknowledge what we believe as Christians in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 106 in our Red Books of Common Prayer. Together we profess I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of God.
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. In our prayers this morning, we remember before God all those Christians who continue to ask God to expel the demons from their lives, homes, or workplaces. We pray that the power and presence of God will reign superior in our hearts and in our lives. Casting out our demons, muzzling them, sending them back to whence they came, so that we can be free. Free to worship Jesus without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. We pray for those who do not know the Lord, but yet are possessed in whatever form by the malicious and malignant enemy. We pray for those who do not know the difference between possession and sickness, not knowing where to turn or what to ask for their healing. We pray that this epiphany, the Lord will manifest himself to us as a mighty deliverer, a wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. All, almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords to your will and the good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now, without me kneeling in a moment of silence, ask God to forgive our sins, to muzzle and cast out the demons in our lives, that hinder us from experiencing his peace and liberating us, setting us free. Using form A, together we pray. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in all word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all our sins and grant that we may serve you in the midst of life. To the glory of God. Amen. Almighty 
Now that we have been forgiven, stand to share God's peace. We are the body of Christ by the one spirit we were all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Let us stand and see the things that make for peace and build up a common life. The peace of the Lord who comes to set us free be always with you. And also with you. We share God's peace by sharing away with each other. We sing the hymn 258, 258.
Eucharistic Prayer Form E, page 142. Let us pray. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me.
joining us in virtual worship this morning and cannot receive Holy Communion tangibly at this time, we pray that you would take a moment and make your spiritual communion with God and we offer you the following prayer. May this holy sacrament preserve your body and your soul to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the second post communion prayer found on page 148. <clears throat> Eternal God, and heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all participate in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all the people you love and pray for today and forevermore. Amen. We take this opportunity to remind all of you to join us for Bible study on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. via our parish Zoom link. The Zoom link can be found in your bulletin that you received on Sunday, the 10th of January, 2021. And we encourage you to share that link with 
others who may be interested in being a part of learning the Word of God with us, discussing the Word, sharing the Word. Please encourage your own family first and then friends to join us as we continue our journey with the Church of Ephesus. We wish to remind all those tuning in that there will be Mass at St. Athanasius on Friday morning at 7 a.m. Please join us, whether in person or virtually, as your need may be. Today we administer communion to the sick. To those in the south of our parish, please pray for those who are receiving communion and those administering communion. In our prayer today, we would like you to remember all of our students who attend the University of the Bahamas who begin their spring semester today. And this is obviously done virtually because we are still in the midst of a global pandemic. All those students who have returned to school abroad in foreign places, we continue to lift them up in prayer as they begin a new semester as well especially those in the United States and in Canada, where the pandemic obviously is on a larger scale. So we pray for those students and teachers, professors and lecturers, and staff of these universities and colleges as well. Please stand now for this lesson.
Jesus is superior to the demons that be. Amen. Amen.